Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 5 on Heredity. This is video number one and we're going to really just review some aspects of sexual and asexual reproduction. Our learning intention for this video is that you can explain the mechanisms of reproduction that ensure the continuity of a species by analyzing sexual and asexual methods of reproduction in a variety of organisms. Now this is kind of an overarching learning intention and underneath it are some specific examples and we'll look at each of those specific examples as we go through these next few videos. But for now we just want to set the stage with a bit of an overview. So uh, three kind of levels for you to be aiming for initially just to be able to contrast sexual and asexual reproduction which hopefully you can remember from your junior science days uh, to discuss one advantage of sexual reproduction and an advantage of asexual reproduction um, as specific strategies for different types of organisms and then to analyze the relative success of each of these strategies as evolutionary strategies and we'll have a look uh, at each of these in a little bit of detail. So hopefully it should be able to hit the top mark here um, for these three success criteria. So reproduction is a very important part of um, the whole idea around natural selection. In fact, one of the keys to natural selection is that those advantageous genes can actually be passed on to future generations. And that has to happen through reproduction. Reproduction is the process of creating new individuals um, from their parents. Now, we hopefully already are starting to get to this idea of the fact that there may be more than one parent, um, and also there may be more than one offspring, depending on the type of strategies that are employed by different organisms. The key, as far as natural selection is concerned, is that um, ability of favorable traits to be passed through onto the next generation, which changes the proportion or the percentage of those genes within the gene pool. And as those shifts are occurring, so we see populations changing um, on the basis of what those particular advantageous genes are enabling the individuals uh, to do or to survive uh, favorably as a, uh, as a response. We are going to review asexual and sexual reproduction and of course strategies around reproduction are very important if we look at evolutionary sequences um, such as that movement from water to land from aquatic to terrestrial habitats that in particular had some major implications for uh, reproductive strategies and so as we go through this next little series of videos we'll keep that uh, in the back of our mind. So let's first talk about asexual reproduction characterized by this brain coral. Uh, that you see uh, pictured here. In asexual reproduction we have one parent and the division um, into two daughter cells. Now probably the, the simplest type of asexual reproduction is binary fission, the splitting of uh, one cell into two as the um, genetic material is copied uh, precisely and then divides into each of these two cells. What that means is you get identical daughter cells or clones. And this is an important, um, this has some important implications in terms of evolutionary strategies. Obviously, um, the type of energy associated with this particular uh, strategy is much lower than it is for sexual reproduction. Um, the individuals don't need to find a mate, and they also don't need to waste a lot of energy on producing particular types of cells that are going to be involved in the process of sexual reproduction. One of the most important things about asexual reproduction is the rapid rate of reproduction. So some bacterial species, for example, can reproduce every 20 minutes. That means that they can create very large population sizes in very small periods of time. The fact, though, that they are identical means that there is less uh, ability to adapt to change in terms of population. Uh, if some change happens in the population, all the uh, individuals are identical to one another, then often it's an all or nothing kind of a strategy. They all survive or they all die. 
So this is where mutation can be very important. And it's also where um, strategies like sexual reproduction, which are increasing variation, which don't produce da uh, daughter cells, which are all identical, can have some advantages. But in stable environments where the, um, where the uh, sets of abiotic and, and biotic factors are not changing very significantly, then this strategy of asexual reproduction can be very, very successful. And obviously, in terms of numbers, the number of organisms that reproduce this way is massive, so it's clearly a very successful strategy. Now, I did mention very quickly uh, binary fission, where, where we have the simplest form of asexual reproduction, where one uh, parent cell splits into two daughter cells, which are identical. That's binary fission. But some of the other methods of asexual reproduction, which we'll have a look at uh, in class, just go through and share these with one another, include things like budding, and the corals are a good example of that, um, the production of spores, vegetative propagation, which is very common in a lot of plant species, and we'll look at some of those too as we look at plants later on. Uh, regeneration, which certain um, organisms are capable of doing, and also parthenogenesis. Uh, which is a specific type of strategy, particularly one that's used by the social insects. So we'll look at all of these different ways of asexual reproduction uh, in a little bit more detail in class, but just to give you a bit of a, a list at this stage. If we contrast asexual reproduction with sexual reproduction, then we're going the other way. This time we have two parents and cells from each parent, which are producing one daughter cell. One of the main advantages of sexual reproduction is that the daughter cell is therefore different to both of its parents. There's, there's extra variation that is introduced into um, the offspring as a result of sexual reproduction that is not the case for asexual reproduction. When we talk about sexual reproduction, we talk about internal versus external fertilization. And in fact, the next video will look more specifically at uh, the contrast between these two strategies, there's definitely an increase in variation. So this is a really important um, basis upon which natural selection can operate, this increase in variation, this difference between daughter or offspring and the parent generation. But it's an energy expensive strategy and in fact Certain types of organisms expend huge amounts of energy, not just on gametes, but also on the care of the offspring once fertilization has occurred. If the goal of any uh, reproductive strategy is to ensure that there is sufficient offspring uh, in future generations for the um, species to continue, then you can see that there are a range of different ways in which this can occur, some of which require more direct investment of energy to ensure survival, others which are more haphazard and work really on the basis of probability. A large enough sample means that a, a small number will still survive. Again, like asexual reproduction, there's a number of different strategies that are part of sexual reproduction, including internal and external fertilization. And as I said, we'll explore these in the next video. Uh, pollination, which is a strategy that's employed by angiosperms, flowering plants, and that can be uh, either self-pollination or cross-pollination, uh, the production of eggs, and also the production of live young. So these are all different strategies, and of course we haven't even talked about things like parental care, um, but we're going to look at each of these um, different strategies, both uh, asexual and sexual reproductive strategies, in future videos. Just an opportunity to give you a bit of an introduction to the different types of ways that organisms reproduce. Thanks for watching.